All right, so I think we can we can start because people will be joining later. Um, and um, well, as as you know, you know, but other people might not know when they see the recording. So I have to run to the introduction phase. I'm Serge Var, CEO and co-founder of Point Labs, and what we are building is called Point Network. Uh, and what we're trying to do is to build the main standard for Web three, the main infrastructure for decentralized. Hey, Crypto Josh, how are you doing? All right, you were able to join as a speaker. That's great. All right, so running to the intro, uh, to the interface. Hope, hope I'm, uh, hope you can hear me well. Uh, if not, let me know. All right. What's going on today? You have some good news to share. Very good news. A lot of good news. Uh, a lot of progress to share. Finally, so uh, you will, you will see in a minute. That's great. All right. So for people who might be new, uh, who might be watching this recording um, and they don't know, they might be thinking, well, what do you mean you guys are creating Web3? Isn't Web3 already created? Is it, isn't it already built on here, right? So don't you see all the projects that um, say that they are Web3 projects and uh, DApps that literally uh, stands for decentralized applications, right? So, uh, and the corollary question, uh, which other people ask is like, what the hell is Web3 even, right? And if you can see people like Elon Musk and Jack Dorsey uh, talking about this and being confused about what Web3 is, I don't blame the, the general population that don't understand what it's about. But thankfully we have a precise answer, right? So Web3 or Web3.0 is the next generation of the internet, right? So currently we, we're in a Web2.0 phase, but uh, for technologies, for decades, it has been their dream to have decentralized internet, which is censorship resistant, privacy oriented, open for everyone, etc. Right. So for example, privacy oriented, we all know that everything is being recorded and then sent into the NSA data centers and then other governments. Right. So um, we all heard about mass surveillance from, from Edward Snowden and his book and, and, and many of the materials he shared. Also censorship. I mean, in this this year, maybe two years ago, I, I, I could have explained why I want to work on this idea. But now I don't have to explain. Like people in the world know that censorship is a big issue, right? After Joe Rogan uh, almost got deplatformed, one of the biggest, uh, well, the biggest actually podcaster, right? And so people are like, yeah, this is getting crazy. This is getting political, and maybe we shouldn't trust big tech to um, um, uh, to 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 manipulate the public discourse. So technologists have been thinking about this for decades. And they have been building tools to get there. So BitTorrent is one of them, right? So before there was there were other uh, networks where you could share files, but all of them got shut down because there was a central point of failure. And then BitTorrent came around, and you cannot shut down BitTorrent. That's why we can still um, download. Well, I'm not gonna say pirated movies, but <laughs> uh, Ubuntu, uh, Ubuntu, um, uh, Ubuntu uh, drives, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? So. This, so the same thing here, right? Then we got Tor, right? Which which allows to be uh, anonymous on the internet. Then we got Bitcoin, which is the same idea, but only applied to money, to, to, to monetary things, right? So uh, before uh, we had digital currencies, uh, like DigiCash and other currencies, all of them died because the governments just shut them down. In Bitcoin, there is no central point of failure. And that was the innovation, right? Satoshi finally did this. And then came along Ethereum and then decided to uh, add additional functionality to this programmable money, right? But uh, created a um, uh, Turing complete language in the serial virtual machine. So, but all of those tools were on the way to this decentralized internet, right? So it's still not there. We're still not quite there, but those tools already allow us a sense of, 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 of where we are going. So are we there yet? Because uh, you've heard about the apps, decentralized apps, uh, they are not they are not fully decentralized yet, right? The only thing that is decentralized is the uh, is the blockchain part. You cannot you cannot connect to normal people will not be able to connect to Uniswap. If the storage gets compromised, right, or gets deleted by AWS or wherever the files are stored, it's also a big problem. Uh, MetaMask can be deleted next day by Google, right? So it's it's not quite the Web3 that we've been dreaming about. And Point Network solves all those issues. It's the complete decentralized architecture with decentralized domains, decentralized storage. Uh, decentralized identities, etc. So, okay, enough about this. So that's the, you can read more about this on the website, but we are here to share the progress. So we started with a prototype uh, and uh, just running locally on, on your computer. And then uh, when uh, next uh, last year, Solana Ignition Hackathon uh, came around, we released our alpha, which was an alpha version 0.1 for technical people. You had to, you had to be able to run like 20 commands uh, and some of you that, that, has, that is here and done this, you remember how, how hard that was. 
right, and install Docker, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But now with the additional funds, we now have the next version of the Alpha 0.2. Uh, it's much better. It has a beautiful dashboard, very easy to install, and uh, we have continuous delivery uh, processes. So testing, uh, QA is being done, etc. Uh, and it's mostly thanks to the amazing team that we have. Uh, we we have been very careful in selecting the best people uh, we could, that were available, and uh, mostly that's the result of all the all their efforts right now and past testers that help us to catch bugs. So uh, the. Emmanuel, we, we hired the first ever user as, as, as uh, head of QA. And uh, it's been very, very useful and helpful. And what he shared with us is that the feedback is that testers really like Point Social, which is our Web3 social network. Uh, they really like the new dashboard, the design look and feel. They think the installation is, um, uh, is very simple. They really like that it is decentralized, even though they might not understand completely all the implications for it right now. But there were some some issues. So, for example, people don't understand why it's so slow, right? So, like uh, it seems, Emmanuel says they expect uh, it to be like uh, like Web two, right, in terms of speed. But uh, what people might not understand is that we are literally yes, we are back in the '90s, right? We are back in the '90s where the technology is not quite there because we are literally recreating protocols of the internet in a decentralized way. So, of course, it's going to be slow for a while. But then with more and more improvements, it will be much better, right? So uh, if you if you get a feel like you're back in the 90s with the dial-up modem connecting to Web3, because yes, we're at that stage, but uh, there's a lot of progress to, uh, to, to go on. Uh, and um, yes, and some also don't understand why it doesn't connect to Web2, uh, which means that if you go to Point Browser, you open uh, uh, facebook.com and it says, sorry, no such website, right? It's because we completely, we're the first one to completely isolate, to not try to merge, like put wheels on horses, like I said, and instead invented the car, right? So we completely disconnected, just like blockchain is disconnected from the real world, so much so that you have to use oracles to push information from the real world to the blockchain. Uh, the same thing is here, right? It's completely disconnected. It's this new growing space that now can be called Web3 because it's a, it's a different virtual space, right? Uh, so, okay, we will talk about this a little bit more, but that's a progress. And the one last thing on the progress is a roadmap, which is, um, so for people who are here listening to this, this is um, an inside scoop. Uh, we have a roadmap uh, on roadmap.pointnetwork.io. Right? So that's roadmap.pointnetwork.io. And in a few days, we will publish it officially, but you can already now enjoy and see what we are up to and uh, where we are in this, um, uh, where we are in, in, uh, in the current progress. So that's a, that's a few things that I wanted to share. And so it will also go to YouTube. So everything's recorded, but um, yes, please feel free to ask your questions. Uh, let's see how I can, because I have to, I have to connect other people. I see many people here. Hi everyone. So um, you might, uh, whoever wants to start, you might want to start. Let me enable, so allow to speak. Basically I will just enable everyone to, to be able to speak. All right, so Oin Ola, DL. All right, so anyone has prepared anything? You can ask, you can unmute. I will wait for a few seconds. If not, I can read the questions that we have on Twitter because people already asked a few of them. Okay, so while you are thinking, formulating questions, I think I'll read something from Twitter. So. Uh, the first question, uh, looking forward to it, what are the biggest stumbling blocks to universal Web3 adoption? Well, the biggest stumbling blocks to universal Web3 adoption is that there's no Web3, right? So once we build Web3, once we build infrastructure, uh, once we make it uh, as easy to use or almost as easy to use as Web2, uh, then people will be able to do. Otherwise, like, how can they use Web3 right now, right? Okay, they install MetaMask, they install, like, it's, it's, um, it's cumbersome to do. But now you can just say, okay, this is Web3, just download this and then you are connected to the decentralized network. It's literally decentralized internet. If you go to pointsocial.point, this domain is virtual. It's on the blockchain. Nobody, no one can take it away from you, et cetera, et cetera. So two things. First, it has to be built, which is what we're doing. And second is education. So as you can see on our roadmap, uh, we also plan to release tutorials and explain to people what it's about and how to use it, et cetera, et cetera. So very soon, uh, in a few weeks, I think we'll have, uh, well, let's see. Let's see what kind of adoption we have. Uh, and then uh, the next one is can't wait. Uh, OK, that's not a question. This man always manages to intrigue me when he talks. OK, thanks. Uh, thanks, uh, Citizen36. 
what is the best way to describe Web3 versus the internet and why do we need Web3 as everything works fine? Well, <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, thanks DJ Town. This is a good question. I mean, people just don't understand, but um, as I said, you know, with more education, they will be able to spot the differences. So, um, you know, you, you can choose either to use a very fast, uh, a very fast big tech social media and then get censored and then your friends get censored and then your um, content creators that you subscribe to their videos disappeared they themselves disappear and you don't get any notification right and you're like wow why is half of my uh, subscriptions just gone right uh, or you can uh, you can migrate to web3 when nobody can do that when nobody can spy on your emails like point mail one of our products is end-to-end -end encrypted, right? So even even uh, more secure than uh, Proton Mail, this in theory now, and now we have to make it in practice by uh, improving the tests and everything, right? But in terms of the general architecture, this architecture is safer than Proton Mail because you never know what JavaScript Proton Mail will send you uh, next day, right, or uh, next moment. But here, every update to a website is a transaction on the blockchain. So um, again, I'm trying to speak as in as few technical words as possible, but I'm a technical co-founder, so it's. Uh, I'm really proud of how we we have uh, we have done everything. So sometimes it uh, it slips into the conversation. So anyway, uh, any one of you already want to want to ask anything, or in Ola or DL, maybe you can introduce yourself and uh, say what's your interest in the tree and where are you from. Yeah, this is the first space, so it's a, uh, it's it's a first experiment on how to host it, how to promote the people, how to make them uh, connect. So it's not a few people, but it's already very good. Now we are getting the hang of it, I think. And then next time, of course, we will have some show producers to click that instead of me allowing you. I hope I uh, if I if I didn't click, if I didn't allow someone to speak, and you cannot speak, just write in the write in the chat because maybe I did something wrong. Oh, for Denise allowed to speak. Well, Denise is one of our developers, team leads, so that's great. And Emmanuel is listening on both devices on Twitter and Telegram, uh, head of QA. Okay. Easy Cozy, you always have something to say. <laughs> what What's your uh, most burning questions about what we're doing? Or you're still studying the roadmap yet? All right, everyone seems to be shy. Maybe after I said that it's going to be recorded, but don't worry. It's like uh, not many people will see it now. But if we're good in the future, then many people will go back to the first uh, Telegram and Twitter AMA. So, all right. Anyway, I'll just continue reading from uh, from Twitter. So, how will you facilitate Web three adoption for non tech savvy people? Well, make it easy to use for non tech savvy people. Like it's it's a developer issue. It's an engineering issue. Right. And this, this is what we're doing, how to make the interfaces better. And it's already like that. So our testers, before, like 90% of people would, would not be able, like if we select random people, 90% of them will not be able to install uh, Point Network, uh, the first alpha version. Now, then the 0.2 version, everyone says it's very easy and they're not technical, but they say, OK, it's like just double click and uh, then register with your seed phrase, register a new seed phrase, and then you are inside. And the browser opens, and then you can go to uh, to, to point social dot point, let's say. And the only difference is that they see those weird domains that do not exist on the normal internet, and that's when they realize, oh wow, it looks exactly like the normal internet, but I can see that it's it's serving the information from somewhere else, right? And that's uh, that's a that's a good impression. So yeah, uh, how how to facilitate web adoption for non-tech savvy people? just need to build Web3 first, all the infrastructure, and make it very easy to use. So no, for example, uh, you will, uh, in the wallet, if you, can, if you want to send someone Bitcoin or Ethereum or points or anything else, you don't ask them for a big hexadecimal string or whatever. You just write their, their, their name or send them directly in the point chat, basically, right? You can, you can send money directly there when it's, when it's done, right? Uh, et cetera, et cetera. So things like that. And um, then we're good because, yes, UI has been suffering in the crypto space. All right. Again, if anyone wants to interject with your live question, uh, feel free to unmute yourself. Click on the button. Just you know, ask away. All right. The next one is, what advantages do Web3 uh, point over the current status in your eyes? So I already, already talked about this. Uh, censorship resistant, which is um, 
I mean, this is one of the things that uh, I don't want to touch on, on political topics, right? But uh, things like misinformation, what does big tech do with misinformation? Well, they just ban, they don't just censor right, right away. And then people behind that are not even, uh, you know, not even doing that fairly. And, and very often it's politically motivated as well, right? But with misinformation, you just like, you combat misinformation by providing an easy, uh, an easy way to, um, for the right information, basically, for the right arguments. I go sometimes to Reddit, and then someone says something like, hmm, okay, that makes sense. But then someone brings up a link uh, uh, below that, which is completely opposite and completely destroys the, 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 the previous point being made. So that's very useful. If only we can have some sort of Wikipedia of arguments on Web3, right, where people can just um, if someone says something, hey, they are doing this. And then you ask, okay, give me a link to the, you know, point argument library, whatever, right? Where where people can discuss this claim and they can bring up counter evidence. And then on those counter evidence, people can bring something else. So things like that. The same thing with censorship, um, already talked about this, right? Uh, it's, it's, it's really crazy. So I don't even have to explain. And then mass surveillance is just, we don't see it, but all our information, all our emails, our photos, our videos, our location history, our browser history, everything gets streamed to completely. So like eight years after Snowden revelation, it's still being done. Eight years for the whole humanity basically is being stored in uh, Utah data centers of, of uh, NSA, right? And then they can abuse it for their own reasons and sometimes not national security related, their own personal and political and career reasons, right? And blackmail someone, etc. So this happens, uh, we, we, we saw this happen. So. How about, um, you know, we just secure everyone's computer and um, like this is the only way because, uh, for example, when Snowden came out with those revelations, they tried to uh, fight it legally, but they cannot, you know, it's uh, it's very hard to fight it legally and whoever starts, they they meet a, a very, uh, very hard opposition on the other on the other end, but technologically we can still do something. And so this is one of the one of the efforts. Okay. Um, yeah, and then the rest is not the questions. People saying getting my popcorn ready. So it's very nice that people still keep uh, keep following. And I think it's different for different time zones. So that's why there's not many people. Uh, but because um, we are in GMT plus three right now, and then next week we're going to travel somewhere else. But we will try to host those spaces in different times so that, um, you know, as many people uh, can, uh, can join and uh, listen uh, and ask their questions. Okay, so we have a chance to to run through the few final questions. So again, or Inola, or DL, or Easy Cozy, if you have anything, I will wait. Usually, uh, you know, because we, we have uh, developer meetings, and sometimes we, uh, so for the team with the team leads, uh, I do it every day. Sometimes it's every two days, depending on the urgency of, of things. But uh, I usually stop at the end and say, okay, anyone has any questions or anything to to say, any comments to each other or to me or and then I noticed that I should wait after this because when I create an awkward pause in people's brains, it, it speeds up the process for them to, um, to come up with something and uh, to, to click that button and, and speak up. So, um, uh, and then I wait until 10 seconds and I think, oh, okay, I should close it. And then on the 10th second, someone speaks. So let's try that. Last call, last chance. All right, well, um, anyway, thanks for um, thanks for the Twitter questions and um, thanks for listening to our progress. I mean, soon it's gonna be, it's gonna be insane. So I don't want to, to be any more specific than that for legal reasons, but um, we have, finally we're on the, shit, I cannot even say, <laughs> I cannot even say exponential uh, words like that, but, um, yeah, we 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 are finally on after after a lot of hard work, after a lot of boring work, trying to, uh, you know, fit the alpha into some good shape. Finally, it's done, and we have the releases, and we have testers, and we have first users, and so it's uh, just gonna be gonna be like that. And when we will try to, so when you when you install alpha, so you can go to coinnetwork.io and click download alpha and install on your computer, and um, tell us in the Telegram group. Uh, 
whether you liked it, whether there are some uh, some comments that you would like to make, because really what we need now is people's feedback, because we have been marinating in our own headspace for so long uh, that we think that it should be like this, but maybe someone says, oh, okay, I try to copy and it doesn't copy and I want to do this and that. So your feedback is going to be really useful right now after we finally released a very user-friendly version. So that's it. Okay. Uh, I see nobody else is speaking. So um, great. Uh, and then for people watching this in the recording or listening, you can go to, uh, if you want to install alpha, go to pointnetwork.io slash alpha. You can just go to our website, pointnetwork.io. And then our Twitter is Point Network, and our Telegram chat, where many, many discussions happen, is t.me slash Point Network chat. And Point Network is just the announcement channel, and Point Network chat is uh, where we are, uh, we're all discussing the announcements and, and what's going on. So yeah, I invite you all there, and um, see you in the next one. Have a good week.